Hello everyone. So dear students, all of you know that balanced diet is required to keep ourselves fit and fine. But along with the diet, we need to focus on exercise, yoga and meditation. So what we do in the meditation and yoga? Usually we take deep breath. So let us do that exercise now or do that activity now. All of you just take deep breath. So, why do you feel the movement? Yes, so isn't it the movement we feel in the chest cavity. So, what happens when we take air in the muscle or the diaphragm? It moves down and the volume of the lungs increase. But when we release the air, the diaphragm again becomes flat and the volume of the lungs again decreases. So what happens? We take air rich in oxygen. We do not take oxygen. Remember, we take air or we inhale air which is rich in oxygen. But where does this oxygen go after we inhale it? Let us see. The oxygen reaches to the lungs through the respiratory tract and in the lungs there are lakhs and lakhs of alveoli. The alveoli are associated with blood capillaries or the blood vessels. So what happens? The oxygen and the carbon dioxide they get exchanged in the lungs. Sometimes the waste materials are also produced. Not sometimes, always. The waste materials are produced in the cells. Those waste materials are transported to liver and to the kidney for the excretion. So, what happens? This blood and the muscle, all those are called as tissue. So, here in this lesson, we are going to learn we are going to learn something about the tissue called as animal tissue. Okay. So, let us start with animal tissue. Okay. Animal tissues are of different types. One, epithelial tissue. Two, connective tissue. Three, muscular tissue. And the last one or the fourth one is nervous tissue. So, what you have learnt? Animal tissues are of four types, epithelial, connective, muscular and nervous. And we are going to learn about the structure, location and function of each tissue one by one. So, let us start from epithelial tissue. Okay. So, look here, look at the picture everyone. Here the epithelial tissue is shown. What do you see? So, isn't it the epithelial tissue or the cells of the epithelial tissue lie on a membrane? The membrane is called as basement membrane. The basement membrane is not a cell. It is just only made up of protein. So, this membrane is non-living. It is not cell. It is made up of protein. Now, again you look at the tissues or look at the cells. How are they arranged? Is there any intercellular spaces? No. So, the cells are tightly packed or you can say cells are compactly packed. These are the characteristics of each and every epithelial tissue. Let us find out where are these epithelial tissue found. Look at the picture. You can see the inner lining of the mouth. Inner lining of the mouth is made up of epithelial tissue. But what type of epithelial tissue forms the inner lining of the mouth? Let us find out. Yes, it is called as simple squamous epithelial tissue. The epithelial tissue name is simple squamous epithelial tissue. Look at the picture. The tissue is only one layer thick. That is why it is called as simple squamous epithelial tissue or you can say it is called as simple. The cells are flat 
from the picture you can see okay, extremely thin cells are extremely thin so what they do they form the delicate lining of different organs what are the organs let us see it is also found in the lining of the blood vessels like artery vein and capillaries it is also found in the lining of the alveoli or the air sacs of the lungs okay so what happens sometimes what we do in the experiment or in the practical in the laboratory we scrap the inner cheek cells with the help of a toothpick or with the help of one ice cream spoon and if you keep it on the slide and put some methylene blue on that and observe it under the microscope you can see this type of cells so in the left side only one cell is shown in the right side the group of cells or tissue is shown so these tissues are none other than squamous epithelial tissue and you know that in the alveoli the simple squamous epithelial tissue is present where diffusion occurs easily but why in the alveoli diffusion occurs why not through our skin have you thought that why not in our skin no diffusion let us find out yes the skin is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue not simple it is stratified squamous epithelial tissue so stratified squamous epithelial tissue is made up of many layers see the picture here the picture shows that the cells are arranged in many layers that's why it's called as stratified strata means layer okay. so as the skin is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue it protects the underlying tissues which are present in our body not only that it also prevents wear and tear in our body the skin is made up of stratified squamous epithelial tissue okay look at the picture here is the inner surface of the small intestine so what happens small intestine is the organ where complete digestion occurs after digestion the food is absorbed so who is tissue helps in absorption of the digested food in the small intestine let us find out what are the epithelial tissue found in the inner lining of the intestine here the tissue is columnar epithelial tissue column look at the picture again how the tissues look yes the cells are tall and pillar like means the length of the cell is more than the breadth that's why the cells look tall and pillar like so already you people have seen that it forms the inner lining of the intestine what it does definitely if it is present in the intestine it helps in absorption and secretion so dear students you might have noticed or observed or experienced that when any dust particle enters into our nose or respiratory tract what happens we sneeze we cough why why do we cough or sneeze when any dust particles or dust particle enters into the respiratory tract so how do we clear it we clear it by coughing by sneezing so what type of tissues are present in that respiratory tract to push it out let us find out in the respiratory tract the type of epithelial tissue present is called ciliated epithelial tissue why ciliated because the cells have cilia or you can say the cells have tiny hair like projections those projections are called as cilia but the cells are tall 
like columnar, the cells are tall. Only thing is that they have tiny hair like projections called as cilia, usually found in the respiratory tract to remove to push the dust particles and the mucus. Also found in the fallopian tube of the females to transport ovum or egg. Okay. Here the next type of epithelial tissue is cuboidal epithelial tissue. Usually this tissue is found in the lining of the kidney tubule. Human kidney is made up of millions and millions of tubular like structure. The structural and functional unit of kidney it is called as called as nephron. You can see the picture at the right side nephron picture. The nephron is made up of a cup like structure and a big tubule like structure. So, that tubule has cuboidal epithelial tissue. Let us see how the cuboidal epithelial tissue looks. Okay. So, cuboidal epithelial tissue is the picture shows like this. Look at the picture. Why they are called as cuboidal epithelial? Because they are cube like. Next, they have large spherical central nuclei. From the picture, you can see the nuclei are positioned in the center and large. Yes. What they do? They help in secretion and absorption. Okay. Okay. So, here you can see in the picture there are three organs of the human digestive system. One is stomach, one is liver and another one is pancreas. They also contain epithelial tissue. They also release the bile juice, gastric juice and pancreatic juice. So, can you tell that what type of epithelial tissue is found in the glands like liver and pancreas and the organ stomach? Let us find out. Yes, it is glandular epithelial tissue. Look at the picture. What happens here? The epithelial tissue forms a fold. Look at the fold here. It forms a fold and forms a pouch or cavity like structure which is called as gland. What it does? It releases or the glandular epithelial tissue stores and releases hormones enzymes, sweat, sebum, which we say oil, clear, okay. So, along with that, along with stomach, pancreas and intestine, any other parts of the body which contain glandular epithelial tissue, can you tell that any other parts of our body which has glandular epithelial tissue, okay. Let us find out, yes. Thyroid gland, adrenal gland and intestinal gland and its sebaceous gland. So, here the pictures are shown of exocrine glands as well as endocrine glands. Means exocrine glands and endocrine glands both have glandular epithelial tissue. So, what you got to know till now about epithelial tissue? Epithelial tissue are of six types. One, simple cuboidal, look at the picture, simple squamous. Why simple? Because they are only one layer. Okay. Simple columnar and stratified squamous, ciliated epithelial and glandular epithelial. There are more number of tissues are also there, but you have to focus on this that simple cuboidal, simple squamous, simple columnar, stratified squamous, ciliated epithelial and glandular epithelial tissue. Okay. The second type of tissue is connective tissue. Picture you see here, look at the image, definitely anybody can tell it is blood because it is having RBC, WBC, plasma and platelets. By seeing the picture, 
you can see you can tell that whether the cells are tightly packed or the cells are loosely packed see here the cells are loosely packed here there are lots of intercellular spaces in between the cells and all those cells are suspended in the matrix but remember in epithelial tissue the cells are positioned on basement membrane but here in the connective tissue the cells are suspended in the matrix and the connective tissue matrix may be liquid may be jelly like it may be solid we will get to know later on so let us find out what are the different types of connective tissues one areolar adipose tendon ligament bone cartilage blood and lymph we will discuss one by one in this lesson so let us find out areolar connective tissue where are they located you see the picture you can find out where are the areolar connected tissue located in our body yes so those are located in between the skin and muscle one second also located around the blood vessels like artery vein and capillaries and the nerves not only that also found inside the bone marrow areolar connective tissue are found in these organs okay if you see the cells definitely it is a tissue so definitely it is made up of cells if you see the cells you will find different type of cells of the areolar tissue one is macrophage one is fibroblast collagen fiber mast cells so varieties of cells are found in the areolar connective tissue what they do areolar connective tissue what they do in our body okay so they fill the space inside the organs for example bone marrow okay they support the internal organs also they help in repairing the tissues when when we get an injury any wound gradually gradually it is repaired so areolar tissue also plays a major role in that okay look at the picture here the person's abdominal region is little bit fatty why isn't it because of the subcutaneous fat and the visceral fat look at the picture it's written subcutaneous fat and the visceral fat so what do you mean by visceral fat let us find out the fat which is wrapped around the abdominal organs deep inside the body is called visceral fat so those fat are stored in another type of connective tissue called as adipose tissue what the adipose tissue do in our body what they store so definitely they store the fat but what are their functions let us find out adipose tissue stores the fat globules look at the picture here the fat globules are so much in the cell that they are pushing the nucleus towards a periphery towards the peripheral region not in the center the nucleus is usually found in the center in the animal tissue but here the fat globules they push the nucleus towards periphery okay. and the fat or the adipose tissue they act as an insulator what do you mean by insulator yes insulator means that do not or the does they do not allow the heat loss from the body so the fat the adipose tissue act as an insulator okay so let us come to the next tissue look at the animation here definitely it is skeleton everybody is able to understand everybody is able to see that it supports the body skeleton supports the body you know it also provides framework to the body and the whole skeleton is made up of another type of connective tissue called as bone 
सो बोन इज अ टाइप ऑफ कनेक्टिव टिश्यू इफ द बोन इज सीन इंटरनली वी गेट डिफरेंट टाइप ऑफ सेल्स अगेन लुक एट द पिक्चर यू कैन सी ऑल द बोन सेल्स आर अरेंज इन कॉन्सेंट्रिक लेयर इन सर्कुलर पोजिशन अराउंड अ कैनल द कैनल इज कॉल्ड एज हवर्शियन कैनल एंड द सेल्स आर कॉल्ड एज ऑस्टियोसाइड्स द बोन सेल्स आर कॉल्ड एज ऑस्टियोसाइड्स हियर ऑल्सो यू कैन सी द मैट्रिक्स इज मेड ऑफ ऑफ calcium and phosphorus which is very hard means the matrix is solid in nature in bone in the picture you can see also the cells are loosely packed not tightly packed and the tissue is hard that everybody knows it is also non flexible tissue okay what it does it anchors the muscle and supports the main organs so next type of connective tissue is cartilages where are they found let us see in our body where are they found yes it's found in ear pinna it's also found in nose tip not only that the rings in the trachea we know rings surround the trachea which prevents it from collapsing and in the joints it smoothens the joint so cartilages are found in those area in our body how they look let us see yes look at the picture again the cells of the cartilages are called as chondrocytes again the chondrocytes are suspended in the matrix which is made up of protein and sugar and this tissue is flexible not like the bone in bone the matrix is made up of calcium and phosphorus but here the matrix is made up of protein and sugar like other connective tissue this tissue is also the cells in this tissue are also tight uh, not tightly packed they are loosely packed again see the animation here so when we stretch our leg picture you see properly carefully you observe carefully observe the picture or the animation when we stretch our leg definitely the bone moves and the muscle contract and expand but which connective tissue helps in movement of the bones and muscles during the stretching let us find out what is present in between that it is non other than a type of connective tissue called as tendon look at the picture in the left side a muscle is shown and the bone is shown and a white color part is tendon tendon is the connective tissue which joins bone with the muscles so this tendon is having great strength more strength it is having but flexibility is less even if it is having great strength the flexibility is very less let us see the animation another one is for you now look here carefully observe what happens it's a joint definitely so in the joint what happens easily look at this easily we can fold our upper arm and lower arm at the joint as this position why what is the connective tissue or which connective tissue is present there let us find out which helps us to fold our arms or legs so it is a type of connective tissue called ligament see the picture of the ligament ligament joins bone to bone okay. is a type of connective tissue which joins two bones but it is very elastic but strength is very less just reverse of tendon the strength is less but very elastic in nature okay. 
Now again another animation for you. Here the blood, you know blood is a tissue. The blood flows in the capillaries, arteries and veins. So blood is fluid, everybody knows. So blood is called as fluid connective tissue. Okay. Look at the picture, the cells you can see, the cells are loosely packed and all those cells are suspended in the matrix. The matrix is called as plasma which contain water, protein, salt and other particles. And the cells are RBC, WBC and platelets. What they do or what the blood does? It transports gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide, nutrients, hormones and waste materials to different parts of the body and from body. So, till now you have learnt the epithelial tissue and connective tissue. Let us recapitulate. So, here is a diagram for you. Identify the tissue and label A and C. Labelings are given here A, B, C, D, but you label only A and C. So, here is the answer. The tissue is areolar connective tissue. A is fibroblast and C is mast cell. Let us come to the second question. Okay. Name the tissue. Means you have to find out or you have to say which tissues are located in these organs. The tissue that forms the inner lining of the mouth. So, here is the answer. It is squamous epithelial tissue. Second bit, the tissue that connects the bone to muscle in human being. You have to name it. Which tissue connects the bone to the muscle in human being? Yes, it is tendon. The third, which connective tissue has fluid matrix? Just now you learnt. So, it is blood. Okay. So, we have already learnt epithelial tissue and connective tissue and the third type of tissue is muscular tissue. Okay. Let us see the animation. Carefully observe the muscle only. Carefully observe. So, is not it contracting and expanding? means contraction and expansion. So, this muscle is attached with the skeleton so called as skeletal muscle. The muscle is attached with the skeleton so called as skeletal muscle. But why is it called as striated muscle? We will discuss later on. See this. Again, when food is there in the stomach, the stomach churns. There is contraction and relaxation of the wall of the stomach. So, which muscle the stomach has or the stomach is made up of? The muscle name is smooth muscle, but its other name is unstriated muscle. Look at the third animation. Definitely, it is heart. The heart contracts and expands to force the blood or to pump the blood to different parts of the body. Heart means heart is made up of muscle. So, which muscle the heart is made up of? Yes, it is cardiac muscle. So, you got to know that muscular tissue are of three different types. One is smooth muscle, second one is cardiac muscle and the third one is striated muscle. Okay. These are the examples where they are found. Okay. Let us discuss about striated muscle. Picture you see properly that the muscle cells are commonly called as muscle fiber. You look at the picture and from the picture you can see the cell shape is cylindrical. Clearly visible from the picture the cell shape is cylindrical. 
there are alternative dark and light band the first picture as well as second picture you are able to see that there are dark light then dark again light dark again light so alternative dark light dark light bands are present it gives the muscle a striated a stripes a striated appearance that's why it is called a striated muscle multinucleated means there are so many nucleus you can see in the picture there are so many nucleus in one cell so it's called as multinucleated cell voluntary in nature means as they are attached with our bone as per our wish we can move it if we want we can go if we want we can stand here if i want i can write so these muscles are voluntary in nature as per our wish we can move it that's why called as voluntary okay they are attached with the skeleton we have already discussed that these muscles are attached with the skeleton the second muscle tissue is called smooth muscle okay look at the picture again individual cells observe carefully the individual cells so this cell is spindle shaped what do you mean by spindle shaped if the middle portion is broad and the both the end are tapering then the shape is called as spindle shaped okay you cannot see any alternative dark and light band so definitely it is on striated muscle okay the third it is uninucleated clearly visible elongated nucleus in each cell they are involuntary in nature means as per our wish we cannot move it for example the esophagus muscle the stomach muscle intestine muscle urinary bladder muscle we cannot move as per our wish so those are involuntary in nature next the third type of muscle tissue is cardiac muscle tissue you know that this muscle tissue is only located in heart so look at the picture how they look so isn't it cylindrical yes so these cells are cylindrical in shape only one one nucleus in one cell so uninucleated alternative dark light band present but it's very faint in striated muscle alternative dark and light band present but that is clearly visible here alternative dark and light band present but it is faint and the another characteristics it is branched striated muscle is cylindrical this is also cylindrical but the difference is that is not branched this is branched so cardiac muscle has got the characteristics few from the smooth muscle few from the striated muscle okay, you can see clearly from the characteristics it is involuntary in nature that everybody knows that heart does not beat as per our wish so it is involuntary in nature so till now we got to know that muscle tissue are of three types one is skeletal muscle one is smooth muscle and another one is cardiac muscle okay here again an animation for you look at this animation carefully the person is touching the candle or you can say the hot candle burning candle and immediately withdrawing his hand why why immediately we withdraw our hand when we touch the hot object something passes to the spinal cord through a tissue what is that something definitely it is information but that information is passing through a special kind of tissue it's called as nervous tissue means nervous tissue carries the information from the body organs to other parts of the uh, to the brain or spinal cord we will discuss this thing here okay 
where are these nervous tissue located let us find out definitely it is located in brain and remember in brain there are billions and billions of neuron located in the brain not one two or thousands okay spinal cord another organ where the neuron tissue is found and the nerve so there are three parts of our body where the nervous tissue is mainly found brain spinal cord and nerves okay nerve is a tissue so it's made up of cells and the cell is called as neuron also it is called as nerve cell this is the structure of a nerve cell and you know that it is the longest cell of the body nerve cell is the longest cell of the body let us find out what are the major or the main parts of the neuron or the nerve cell part 1 dendrite you can see from the picture the appendages which are coming out of the cell body next part 2 cell body it is also called as cyton okay again a long structure that is coming out of the cell body it's called as axon and the fourth one is nerve ending where it ends okay so these are the different parts of the neuron okay what it does already we discussed but you see the animation you see it is carrying something so what is that so information neuron carries the information from the sense organ to the brain and spinal cord the major function of the neuron tissue okay along with that you know that neuron or the nerve and the muscle tissue both the tissue enable the animals to move rapidly so these are the functions so till now you have learnt about muscular tissue and nervous tissue so let's revise what you have learnt okay so here is a picture one image for you identify the tissue and label a b c d a b c d are the main parts of the this tissue so what is this tissue it's a cell actually it's a part combined together to form the tissue so what is this it's neuron and the parts are look part a is dendrite part b is cell body c is axon and d is nerve ending so let's go to the second question yes the question is which muscle tissue is cylindrical in shape multinucleated and voluntary you need to think cylindrical in shape multinucleated and voluntary which one yes it's striated muscle as it is attached to the skeleton it's also called as skeletal muscle so till now we have learnt all this that animal tissue is divided into four categories epithelial muscular connective and the nervous epithelial is again divided into squamous cuboidal columnar ciliated and glandular muscular tissue is of three types one is striated what is non striated or you can see it is called as smooth muscle and the third one is cardiac muscle connective tissue is again divided into many types one is areolar one is tendon then ligament adipose bone cartilage blood along with that lymph also okay we'll discuss it in the higher classes lymph okay and the nervous tissue there is no classification of the nervous tissue nervous tissue is only made up of the cell called as neuron so today in here we have learnt this much hope you understood thank you everyone